Hello children, it is wonderful that you're with me today. My name is Miss Ray and I've been asked by Miss Holly and by Miss Kate to do some PE with you. Now you might be saying, but Miss Ray, I already do PE. I do PE with Joe nine o'clock every day or maybe another time in the day. Well, that is fantastic. And I want you to keep on doing pee with Joe because I do pee with Joe and pee with Joe is amazing. Joe gets us really, really moving quickly. He makes our hearts race. He makes them really bump fast. We call that beating. He makes our hearts beat fast. He makes us puff. He sometimes makes our muscles ache, but it's a good ache. And pee with Joe gets us healthier and fitter and stronger. Our muscles get stronger, our hearts get stronger, our lungs get stronger. It helps our brains to work better. And as Joe always says, it makes us feel amazing. So I want you to keep on doing your pee with Joe, because I am. My pee lessons are a little bit different. I'm going to teach you skills, okay? So I'm going to teach you how to do things and those skills, we call them skills, those skills like bouncing a ball, okay, that's a skill, or maybe it'd be kicking a ball, that's another skill. Those skills help us to play games and it could be games on our own, it could be games with friends or family, okay? And that is another way of keeping us fit and healthy and it's another way of making us very very happy so you'll be doing PE with Joe in the morning and then I'll be seeing you for PE in the rest of the week just before I begin though one thing my sessions my videos are not like Joe's with PE with Joe you start and you're doing the exercises and you keep going you keep going you keep going and then you finish with me, I would like you to watch what I do and then I'd like you to pause the video and I'll tell you when. You pause, go away, practice what I've just shown you. You might have to go outside, but have a practice, see if you can get better and better and then come back and have a look at the next section because the next section might be telling you something that you can do to make it better okay something that will help you improve all right so i call those my handy hints something that will help you get better or i might be showing you something different another activity and you do the same watch me do it and then i'll say time to pause you pause you go off you have a practice and then you come back. And that means that you can practice your skills and you can keep coming back and learning new skills or having handy hints of how to improve. So that's how this video is going to work. Right, don't know about you, but I think we ought to get started. I need to do something before I start. Wait there and I'll be back in a moment. See you soon. Okay, I'm back and I've done my preparation. In other words, I've got everything together that I need. So in my box, I've got, oh, I've got all sorts of things. I've got chalk because sometimes I need chalk and I've got a ball and I've got a cap. I'll tell you more about that later. And I've got a racket and there's a bat and all sorts of different balls. Okay, so now I've done my prep, we can get ready. Just put this down. Today, we're going to be doing bat and ball skills. Okay, so we're going to be learning how to control a ball using a bat. What was that? Oh, don't worry if you haven't got a bat or a racket. That's fine. I've got a badminton racket. It's very thin and light use a light ball on that one and I've got a wooden bat like you'd use at the beach but don't worry if you don't have these because 
just about everybody has one of these at home. Oh yes. You ready? Just about everybody has. <gasps> yeah. Either a frying pan or a chapati pan or something like it. And we can use these for bats if we don't have a proper bat. But please do remember, if it's something that you normally don't use, if it's a grown-up thing, please ask your grown-up if it's okay. All right? And if you're inside, ask your grown-up because these, if they hit things inside, because it's a bit tight in some people's houses, my house is a bit tight and small, and if I was using one of these, I might hit something and I might put marks on it, okay? So you do need to have a bit of space if you're using these because they're quite hard, okay? A bit like a wooden bat, but a bit harder than that again, okay? So these are best used outside or in the middle of a biggish room. But ask your grown-up. The first thing we need to do is put our thinking cap on. This is my thinking cap. Really, really important. The first thing you need to do is think about where you are. Okay? Are you inside or outside? If you're inside, what sort of ball will you use? Will you use a really hard golf ball? No. Would you use a tennis ball inside that's still quite hard and quite heavy? You wouldn't, would you? Because if they hit things or bounced off things, they'd most likely break them. Okay? So if you're inside, you need to be using... That's right. You need to be using something like a foam ball or an air ball or a shuttlecock. And if you don't have those, you can just roll up a piece of paper, scrunch up a piece of paper, or you can make a sock ball. So you get a pair of socks and roll them up and you make a ball shape. Okay, so find the right ball for you. I'm going to use this ball, even though I'm outside because you can see it easily. I've got my thinking cap on, I've c cleared the area, okay? It's a very good cap because cuff for cap, cuff for cleared. I've cleared my area, so I'm not going to bump into anything, okay? I've appraised it, I know it's the right place to be, and I've prepped my things, and I'm ready, okay? So, I'm going to use this one because it's got a nice surface. The first activity I would like you to do is take your ball and introduce yourself to your bat. So shake it by the hand. Imagine its handle is a hand and shake it. That's the way you're going to hold your bat. Turn it over to the flat side, get the ball and put it in the middle and I want to see can you balance that ball. If it's tricky doing it on the very flat side, turn it over to the side that's got the edge because that makes it easier. The ball doesn't roll off so often. Try and hold that ball, keep it in the middle. So you've got to keep your bat absolutely flat. Can you walk backwards, walk forwards? Not too far when you're going backwards because you need to know what's behind you. Can you go in a circle? Keep the ball in the middle. Lovely. Can you go very, very low? Oh, nearly down to the ground and up. If you're doing really well, turn it over to the flat side where it can roll off easily and have another go. Okay, if you're not sure about your grip, say, how do you do? Turn, here we go. Oh, that's a bit trickier. Oh, I'm moving around. I'm going to take my ball for a walk. Ooh. Oh, I'm getting better. I'm going to go high. Oh, I'm going to go low. Side to side. Can I go from side to side? Oh, my goodness. I want you to pause. I want you to go and get your bat and ball. Remember, think, is it sensible? Is it safe? Ask a grown up if you have to. And then I want you to practice balancing that ball 
and trying to keep it on your bat as you do different movements. So pause, go and practice. And then when you've had a really good practice, come on back and I've got something else for you to do next. Okay, off you go, go and practice and I'll see you soon. Fantastic, you're back. How did you get on balancing that ball? Did you get better? Yeah? Handy hint for you, okay? If you're finding it tricky, try and keep your bat absolutely flat, okay? And watch the ball. There's no point in looking somewhere else, oh, because it will drop off. You have to watch it all the time. And you must keep it flat. If you start to tip, oh, the ball will roll off one way or the other. So remember, watch it all the time and keep it flat. If you think now that you've had that handy hint, you'd like to go and practice some more, pause now, go and practice. And then when you've got really good at balancing the ball, come back for the next bit. We're now going to bounce the ball, okay? I'll show you how to do it. Remember, right grip, so say how do you do. Flat side, I'll move back a little bit so you can see. To start off, we have a flat bat, okay? And we're going to drop the ball. And when we drop the ball, we're just going to do a little lift. And the lift is actually a very little lift with the bat staying flat. Can you see? We're not tipping it or flicking it with our wrist. Our wrist stays nice and strong and it just is going up and down. Okay, so we're not tipping it or flicking it or flapping it because that will make the ball go in different directions. So watch, flat bat, ball drop. Oh, that's right, there we go. Very little movement and my bat is nice and flat. I like that noise. This is why it's my favourite bat, because it's a musical bat. Okay, you might have to move your feet. Okay, but keep watching that ball. Wow. See how you get on. Remember the start is flat bat, drop and little, little taps. Okay, don't do a great big one because it will go miles away. Okay, don't do too small, otherwise it won't go anywhere. You just have to get a little bit of lift. Right, pause, go and have a go, see how you get on. And remember, practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the better you'll get. And then come back for the next bit. Okay, right, off you go. See you in a bit. Bye. Fantastic, great to see you back. How's it going with that bouncing? Are you improving? Normally, the more we practice, the better we get. I hope it's going well. If it's going really well, challenge yourself a little. Instead of standing still, bouncing, try and move. Can you go in a circle? Can you go forwards? Can you go back? Can you make it go higher? So instead of one, two, three, four, higher. One, two, three, four, five, six, whoa, seven. <laughs> Can you go lower? Small ones and then big ones. Small ones. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> Try and get a pattern. So small, low bounces high bounces, low bounces, high bounces. <laughs> Try doing different things. So challenge yourself. You might want to walk with the ball. You might want to go in circles. Can you bend down low? So I'm going as low as I can and then I'm coming up. And that's a good one to practice for the next bit. So 
Go low, keeping your bat nice and flat, and then come up. Have a go at those. Challenge yourself and practice. If your hand or your wrist is getting a bit tired, especially if you're using a pan, okay, give yourself a break, do some little exercises, shake it off, and maybe come back later in the day, okay? Pause, go practice, and I'll see you back here for the next bit. See you later. Fantastic, how's it going? Is it going well? You're smiling, so it must be good. We're going to make things a little trickier now by doing the bounce drop. So we're going to bounce the ball, then we're going to let it drop on the floor, and when it comes up, we're going to keep on bouncing, okay? Watch and see. Shake hands. I'm ready. Bouncing. Drop. And keep bouncing. Drop. And keep bouncing. Drop. And keep bouncing. Now, handy hint for you before you start. This bat has always got to be nice and flat. Even if the ball is close to the ground, so this isn't very bouncy, hardly bounces, so you have to get underneath. And to get underneath the ball, you need to bend your knees. So I bend my knees to get under. Look how bent my knees are. That makes it easy to get my bat underneath nice and flat. If I don't bend my knees, I'm trying to get under and, well, look, my bat's at a funny angle, so the ball will just go shooting off in different directions. I have to bend my knees to get underneath. So watch again. You might be lucky and you might be using a bouncy ball, in which case the ball might come up to your tummy height and you don't have to go so low to get underneath okay so it'll depend on the ball you're using but if your ball isn't bouncing very high you will need to get underneath if it is bouncing quite high you might have to wait for it to come down just watch bounce on the ground Ooh, wait for it to come down bounce on the ground Ooh, wait for it to come down okay so have a go at that the bounce drop pause go practice have fun and then come back for the next bit see you soon right so we've done the bounce drop what is next well next is the floor bounce okay so instead of the ball being hit upwards we're going to change and we're going to hit the ball downwards onto the floor it's actually exactly the same okay it's just we're using the flat of the bat pointing downwards but we're still keeping it absolutely horizontal okay absolutely flat okay and we're just gently pushing down we're not flapping our wrist because that can hurt our wrist and also it means that well if you flap like that boink the ball will go that way if you flap like that, the ball will go that way. Okay, so we're not flapping or smacking the ball. We're just gently pushing, bonk, bonk, bonk. Have a watch. This time we drop it on the floor and then we push down. Are you ready? Again, you might have to move your feet if your ball moves. Okay, have a go at that downward bouncing. It's a little bit trickier if you've got something like a pan and you can't see through it. Okay, but I'm sure more practice, the better you will get. When you've practiced really hard, come on back to me and we'll do the next thing. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Oh, hello. Oh, nearly 20. <laughs> and then I got disturbed and I lost sight because I stopped looking at the ball. I lost sight of the ball and it all went wrong. But not bad. My best score is 18. 
I wonder what your best score is. Right, we've done bouncing up and we've done bouncing down. Okay, we're now going to do both. So we're going to do some upward bouncing and then we're going to do some downward bouncing. So when I bounce up, so I'm still going to shake my racket or my pan by the hand. When I bounce up, I'm using that way. And when I'm bouncing down, I use the bottom. OK, so watch. Up, 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 down, down, down. Up, 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 bounce, down, down, down. So I bounce up, then I let it drop to the floor and I bounce down. Then up, and when I'm bouncing down, that's fine. But then I go underneath and I might have to bend those legs again to keep my racket or my pan flat. OK, pause there, go away and practice and then come back for the last bit of today's session. OK, go on, off you go. Practice hard and when you come back, we'll see how you've done. See you soon. Well, how are you doing with your wonderful bouncing up in the air and down on the floor? Is it going well? You can now do lots of lovely fun things. You can make patterns for yourself. If you're with someone else and they're playing this with you, you can pass the ball to each other. So you might be bouncing up and you're going to then let the ball bounce once and you say to your friend under and then your friend gets the ball and bounces. So I bounced up. My friend would come in and they bounce it. Woo! <laughs> it went off. You could both have a ball and both be bouncing. And when you say now, you then swap. Just make sure you don't bang into each other. But you can swap and take each other's balls. You can also just play a game with patterns. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You can have fun playing patterns. How long can you go with your patterns? How long can you keep it going? Okay, so I want you to go off and have lots of fun using those bouncing skills in different ways. And like I said, if you're with a friend, you can copy each other or you can play games where you take turns with the same ball. All right, but I want you to do a little bit of homework for me. Do you remember at the beginning, I said that I had lots of different sorts of balls. Yep, all sorts. Little air balls, bouncy balls, a sort of a squishy foamy ball, and a mini mini ball. What I want you to do is if you've got more than one sort of ball at home, I would like you during the week, ready for next time I see you, whether it's this week or next week, I want you to try those activities, those skills that I've just taught you using the different sorts of ball. And if you had a shuttle cot, you could also try it with that. So you're going to experiment and you're going to see which balls are good for bouncing up, which are good for bouncing down, which are good for doing both, which is the easiest one? Is there one that you like better than the others? And if you do like one ball better than the others, why? Why is that the better ball? There might be a ball that you don't like at all. There's one in here I really don't like. And I'll tell you why next week. OK, so that's your homework. Have great fun practicing that skill. Challenge yourself. See if you can do more and more and more bouncing it up or bouncing it down without letting it get out of control. And play games and make up games with friends. And then I'll see you next time to take it a stage further. Have a great week. Remember, you can always come back to this this recording and you can always refresh your memory and do a little bit more. OK, looking forward to seeing you next time. Enjoy the practicing. Bye.